This is the uh, ESP32, the W room variation of it. It's a, a microcontroller with uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth all in the same module, which is kind of neat. Um, this version here has been packaged up and has an FCC ID, uh, which makes integration to systems a little bit easier. Let's uh, take off this metal cap and uh, tear it down and see what kind of components uh, are on it, and then de-encapsulate the silicon and uh, take a look at that. So with the RF shield removed, you can see the uh, two major bits of silicon, uh, the actual ESP32 here with the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, microcontroller all in a single package. That's what's so exciting how small that is, which has a great amount of functionality. Uh, this is the actual firmware. It looks like it's in a serial EEPROM. And uh, of course, here's a crystal oscillator and just a smattering of discrete set around the package, which is really impressive. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of functionality uh, in such a small uh, device. Here, of course, you can see the meandered inverted F antenna. Uh, that's probably providing the actual RF contacts. Looks like there is one on this side. And nothing on this side. So uh, that makes sense. Uh, the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, share the same frequency band, so you can uh, multiplex the signals onto a, a single antenna structure. So here we see the uh, ESP32 die, and uh, the most obvious area is down here, which is the uh, RF section, the Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi. We'll zoom into that in a second. You can see really heavy metalization around here. There's going to be digital circuitry under this metal. We'll strip that metal off and take a look at that. And then you can see that they've carved out a section here, which implies that this thing here needs to be in a quieter power plane. There's probably noise digitally here, and they need to isolate something. So if you just change uh, photographs, uh, on this photograph here, what I've done is I've removed the top metal, so now we're looking at the polysilicon. Uh, here, of course, you'll still have the RF section. Uh, but now you can see uh, significant memory arrays, of course, because the uh, ESP32 has a pretty decent processor section and, and reasonably significant amounts of RAM and ROM. Uh, there's also encryption engines in this thing. I suspect that's uh, partially uh, some of these uh, memory components as well. You can see it's about 60% uh, logic. These would be logic gates here. And then, of course, the memory blocks below. So here's the RS section of the chip, which I just zoomed into it. Uh, this is pin 1 for the device, and that goes to the antenna. Uh, and that means, of course, there's going to be a receiver and transmitter on this path. And to sort that down, if we look this way here, this is a ballon. It's a transformer. It's got two inputs here and two inputs there. Um, and uh, what it does, it matches an unbalanced to balanced impedance. And uh, so that implies the transmit is on this side here. Uh, then if you trace around here, you can see the pad going through here to this uh, inductor, then up into this direction here. Uh, that implies this is the, uh, the receive side of the actual uh, RF chip. Uh, on this side here, they get the crystal coming in. Uh, that implies this is probably going to be the phase lock loop VCO. Uh, you have like a 2.1 gigahertz nominal signal, but you got to tune exactly to the band you're transmitting and receiving on, so that implies that circuit here. Uh, this is the RX here. This, I would suggest this is probably the uh, analog to digital converter here, and that means a DDA converter probably over here somewhere. I'll throw these uh, photographs up onto my blog if you'd like to take a, a larger uh, look at them. So we're looking at the, the top metal layer, and of course you strip down the metal, you can actually see the polysilicon, which is helpful for reverse engineering. So here where the transformer was, of course, it's just blank polysilicon. So it looks like these... Uh, Transformers and inductors are completely made out of the metal layers. There's no polysilicon involved. Uh, what else? This is if this is the transmit side here. You have to have some sort of power transistors. I suspect that's this here. Look like uh, like fin fets or something. Sort power transistor down here. Uh, you get some curious things like this up here. You get this heavy metallization. They get this array of polysilicon. I've seen that before. I'm not entirely sure what it's about. Uh, anyways, uh, as always, I'll put up uh, this picture also onto the blog because it's helpful for uh, sorting down things. Here's a capacitor, probably almost certainly, with the large uh, areas of a uh, die consumed on that. The uh, other device on the uh, assembly is an integrated circuit, which is a, a boot problem, probably an SPI device. Uh, literature says it's uh, 4 megabits in size. And uh, here's the actual photomicrograph. If you look at it, you can see there's four sections, each one megabit in size, I should presume. And then the control circuitry here. You can see how quite significant it is, actually, compared to the memory storage area. And that's because an SPI prom has got a lot to do to a program an E-squared device. is actually requires a lot of circuitry. Let's just zoom into this uh, control section here. You can see, of course, a limited number of pads of ESD protection diodes in each one. These big heavy metallizations, of course, are power and ground. Uh, in here is actually a fair bit of random logic. Uh, it's like a sequencer of some sort, which uh, does all the commands. And, and the rest actually is fairly analog in nature. Let's just change uh, to this... Uh, 
picture here where I stripped the metal off. Uh, in here is all the logic gates. Let's go zoom in a bit further. You can see the actual polysilicon here. And with the metal interconnecting, I mean, you're looking at uh, thousands of gates of logic here. And then, of course, you can see very much analog structures throughout the chip here. You've got to produce a fairly high voltage to program an E-squared uh, device correctly. So uh, that's the uh, 4 megabit uh, SPI problem that's in this uh, particular assembly. Uh, so that was the uh, ESP32. Uh, so you get a good sense, actually, how they can uh, build such an incredible function, that sort of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which you sort of think of being really complicated and expensive, um, just how cheap it can get when you would get it integrated into a silicon die. You only look at tens of pennies of uh, cost there in that silicon, so a, a real testament to uh, engineering and how it can drive costs out over time. Uh, looking at this W-Room 2 module, it's actually kind of uh, fun to see that the uh, boot problem is actually larger than the actual microcontroller. I think actually this company has now introduced one where they've actually stacked the uh, SPI prom uh, on top of the actual uh, die of the uh, ESP32 so they can build a much smaller package. Uh, anyways, uh, hopefully that was of interest and uh, if you would like to take a longer look at those uh, die photographs, they are on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.